His Excellency uh, he has been appointed to the United uh, States since 2008 and has been since creating a positive impact to the relations between both countries. Among many successful initiatives, he has also been leading UAE efforts to increase defense and cooperation with the United States and other allies. Your Excellency, good morning again, and thank you so much for being with us. And there's a lot going on in the world at the moment. And you've been in the US for several years now, been at the table of top defense discussions. Both sides want trade, but we all know there are many reservations on both sides. How do we build trust today and areas of collaboration for safety in the region? You don't build trust. Trust is earned, whether it's between two individuals, friends, countries, or partners. That trust has been earned, at least in my humble experience with the United States, over decades, not the last few years. From deployments in the past as early as 30 years ago, and as late as the latest deployment in Afghanistan. Trust is when there's an American special operations mission going on somewhere like in Afghanistan that calls in for Emirati Air Force air support. That's trust. Trust is when the Americans release the state-of-the-art technology for us to use. That's trust. And I think we have a very strong and a very clean track record of not only getting the most sensitive American and other Western technology, we also have an incredibly strong track record of protecting that technology. We have had zero incidents where anything has fallen into the wrong hands. But back to your original question on trust. If you have a friend of yours and you go share an important sensitive secret with this friend of yours, and then you discover this friend of yours goes and tells three or four other people, you are less likely to tell that friend anything else sensitive from that, from that point on. And I think our history and our track record is very strong and that whatever we've gotten, we've protected. And that's an important responsibility for us to protect as well, not just the third party. We take that very seriously. And I'll conclude by saying, look at where we are today. We're in a conference that discusses technology and defense security. This conference is the first time has been held in the Middle East. Everybody's here to talk about this subject. How do we develop it? How do we strengthen it? How do we make sure that everyone looks at the UAE as a faithful, trustful partner. We know for sure that the U.S. is a favorite destination of the UAE. How do you see the future since I understand that trust is already earned yeah. between uh, the both countries? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see the future and how do we learn uh, from each other and from the past experiences? Yeah. You've mentioned many. Look, our relationship with the U.S. is like any relationship. It has strong days where the relationship is very healthy and days where the relationship is under question. Today we're going through a stress test, but I'm confident that we will get out of it and we'll get to a better place. But again, it's not just the U.S. For me, building that trust with all the countries that we work with is very important to how we develop this sector. I think it's fair to say that 10, 20 years ago, the UAE was considered or viewed as a traditional buyer of defense technology. We would go buy what we need, and then we would use it. Today, in 2022, I think that the framework is not still the same. I think today we are more of a developer, a partner, a collaborator. We're not interested in just buying. We're interested in partnering. We're interested in developing. We want countries and companies to come in here and create the industry that would help us create the industry that we're trying to develop. We want people to transfer their technologies here. We want people to develop their technologies here. We want to create jobs in this industry here. And at the end of the day, we want to be more self-sufficient than just the old days of when we go buy something. And that applies to every country. So I think one thing I'd like to leave this audience with is we are going to develop an organic, homegrown defense industry. The days of just being a buyer are over. And we are open for business with all of our partners. And that includes companies and countries. And whether you are a, an early startup in your initial rounds of funding, or you're a Lockheed Martin or Boeing. So the conference, as you've meant, mentioned, it's the first time that will be, it will, it's held in the, yeah. in the Middle East. And this is a huge step also. 
and it has looked at technologies issues, at artificial intelligence, space, robots, everything. Do you see the U.S. is understanding the posi position of the UAE today? Yeah. I think from a private sector perspective, yes. I think from a public opinion perspective, not yet. What is missing? I think not everyone has adapted their view to what I just described, that mm. yeah, the changes that the UAE is going through, where the UAE wants to go. But that's why this conference is important. That's why helping people get that understanding and that familiarity with who we are and where we want to go is very important. I think people still look at us, again, through the old lens, but they are becoming increasingly familiar and involved with Tawazun and Edge and other companies in coming in here and actually building and partnering and developing things locally as opposed to just selling it. So I, I think we're improving, but I don't think we're there yet. So. Is it also covering the transfer of knowledge? Yes. That's a key part of what we're trying to do. Okay. I was in a briefing here in Abu Dhabi, I want to say seven or eight years ago. And I remember the slide. The slide had the top five companies in the world, uh, say, 20 years ago. ExxonMobil, Coca-Cola, General Electric, and a couple of others. Those don't even come in the top 20 today. The top five country companies in the world today, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, all technology companies. And so we see the shift of where the world is going. And we want to be on the front end of that shift, whether it's in defense and technology and security, or on climate and space, or on agriculture. There are so many things that are developing in a very fast and dynamic way, the transfer of knowledge of all of these sectors coming to the UAE is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. So you're here with us at this conference, and do you see the future of the US and UAE relationship? I'm talking about that because you're the ambassador there, yeah. so we need to get more information regarding this kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. Indeed, how should we look at, how, how should we look to encourage uh, such conferences and the exchange uh, in the future? I think, <laughs> and after being a diplomat for 13 years, I say this you know, with hesitation, I think it's going to be largely driven by the private sector. You know, when we have collaborations with private sector companies creating jobs, creating technology, creating knowledge here with American or other businesses, it is going to lead to a healthier partnership. If we wait for the two governments to figure this out and take the lead, we're going we're gonna to be behind. Right. We need our private sector and the U.S. private sector to be the cheerleaders for how this partnership develops for the future. To what extent, we're talking today about the United States of America, so to what extent does the strong political, we were talking and mentioning yeah. the private sector, but at the same time we all know that the political relationship between the countries is very strong, to what extent this facilitate uh, the defense and cooperations uh, between them. It, it is critical to all this. Everything that I just described requires a very strong political understanding and relationship. And I'm not worried about the UAE and the US from a political angle. I am actually more worried about the United States. I've been there for 13 years, and over time I've seen the United States become increasingly polarized, become increasingly divided become, there's almost two different visions of what Americans believe America should be, and it creates this very diverse political spectrum where there is more disagreement than agreement, mm -hmm. where there is less room for compromise, where if you are close with one side, you are not close with the other side. That, I think, is a danger, not so much for the UAE, I think that's a danger for America. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this get worse over the last few years. Uh, so I, I think the political response to your question is, if we see a more unified America, it's good for everyone, it's good for the world, but I, I worry that that's not happening. So what specific area in defense and technology cooperation that you are targeting to improve and to develop with all yeah. what, the facts that you've stated? I think the biggest challenge everyone's facing today is drones and counter-drone mm -hmm. technology. 
I think it's proliferated to the point where it's very hard to control and it's very hard to create a proper defense system to prevent drone attacks the way we have developed a defense system to prevent missile attacks. In the past, the threat was missiles. A more advanced missile then creates a more advanced defense, missile defense system, and so on. Cyber, more advanced offensive cyber weapons, more advanced defensive cyber weapons. I think we are behind the curve on drones. Drones are expanding, developing, improving, and we have yet to develop a, a very healthy, robust drone defense system. That, I think, is going to be our, our main challenge in the future. Can you say you're optimistic? I'm always optimistic. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a diplomat. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the job. It has to be. If otherwise, I would, uh, I would be very depressed. I wanted to ask you also a question, kind of internal because we all know that the UAE investment in youth is one of the basic pillars yeah. in the educational system uh, in the UAE. And the knowledge sharing between uh, the UAE uh, universities and the US, is it also uh, a positive part of the whole system? It, it's amazing how impressive youth in this country are. I, I speak to a lot of young people and universities, diplomats. It is amazing how energetic, engaged, driven our younger generation are. I, I tell people that I am definitely not worried about the, one of the reasons I'm, I'm optimistic is because I'm not worried about the future because I see the caliber of the younger generation in this country and I know we're gonna be in good hands. But whether it's in technology and some young Emirati develops an incredible app or technology that becomes global, or it's a, a young Emirati diplomat that takes over from me or other ambassadors in the future, I feel very, very comfortable with where this country and its youth are going to take it. I want, before we end this uh, little chat, to know your message to the youth in uh, the UAE and the youth in the United States of America yeah. who also try to be in contact with you yeah. and look up to you and try to learn from your experience. My message to young people, whether it's in the UAE or the United States, is try to put politics behind you and try to actually get to know each other. Try to understand each other. Try to get to know each other's families, their values. What do they like to eat? What do they want for their kids? Put the policy issues aside, put the politics aside. Try to get to know each other and build an understanding and respect then everything else becomes easy. But what I see, unfortunately, sometimes is judgmentalness. Um, fear. Fear, lack of understanding. Lack of understanding of what's truly happening. Lack of understanding of what's important to us. Lack of understanding. If people understand what's important to me and my family and how I go throughout my day and what my priorities are and what my values are, we can still disagree on policy issues but we can agree with respect and civility that I have an opinion, maybe we have to go this way, but you know what, maybe I'll take a different route and I'll go that way. It doesn't mean you're my enemy, it doesn't mean I have to demonize you, it doesn't mean I have to attack you, it just means we have a dis difference of views on a specific subject, but that we are still humans all interested in living and coexisting peacefully. And I think this is something that is one of the most iconic values of the UAE. Everybody that visits or lives here understands it. The people who have not seen it don't get it. But we have 200 nationalities that live here. Everybody goes to work happy, lives safely, and, and has a purpose. Everybody who lives in this country has a purpose and feels like they belong to this country. That is very special, and I don't think a lot of countries have this. So back to your original question, I want the youth to try to get to know each other and understand each other, recognizing there's going to be differences of opinion, but at the end of the day, we have to work together in order to achieve our goals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for being here with us today. And I hope this optimistic message will uh, pass through uh, from the UAE to the whole Middle East, to the whole world, because 
I come from Lebanon where our differences like uh, got us into a very big troubles and we've been living this for the past 30 years. Thank you very much for being here and I will wish you also a very successful second day in this conference. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you.